So North Wales Recovery Community, um, the, 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 you know, the, this thing that you've set up, as you admit, with a lot of other people, but but you are you are the founder, and everyone everyone knows that it, it, it's your baby, and uh, uh, and we've been your um, midwives for want of a better expression. <laughs> yeah. yeah? yeah. Um, um, you've described those first two years. Just tell me a little bit about what you've become today for the for the people who just haven't got it just don't know now so you know we're a residential community we we yeah. house some um uh, daytime recovery stuff if you talked about we do some interesting exhibition and activity stuff but you've got two other big bits of the jigsaw now as well so just tell something about about where you've become today because i think it's a such a, such a journey and we are still only talking about seven or eight years as well aren't we so yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, eight years now. Um, yeah, uh, growing for change is, is a big part of what we do. So one of the very first things that we ever sort of tried to provide for people was was like gardening, allotment, growing stuff. These are, you know, as we know, there's a, a massive sort of benefit to, to to just being being outside in nature and and, and kind of that, that whole kind of mindfulness stuff. And we, we linked in very early on with with a guy called Paul Gordon Roberts, who's like a horticultural therapist, but used to be an old hippie, used to live in a bus. So it was a swampy sort of, basically. Really ironic. I think we, we kind of, we were on, um, yeah, we used to sort of social, well, business bits together. He, he used to be into a different kind of growing at once upon a time, shall we say, when I was still in Manchester. Um, but we've done that on and off for, well, like on constantly for about 12 years. And then past few years, we've just been able to kind of get it on some more of a stable footing. Paul works for us full time now. So we have a, a small growing element uh, actually attached to Penryn House. Got a couple of polytunnels there, some outdoor growing space. Um, but then we, we manage the, the polytunnel growing stuff up at Moyla Key, which is a local community based farm not too far from yourself out in Tregar, which gives us probably about another six or eight polytunnels there. So we're growing. We primarily our, our biggest sort of bits. Uh, we do a lot of lettuce, uh, a lot of greens, microgreens, and stuff like this, uh, and then tomatoes over the, the kind of summer. But um, we supply a number of local restaurants, a couple of vegan places, um, and also uh, basically supply ourselves with Bibi Da, which is the, the other thing that we do, which is. It's basically it's a. Uh, and I just want to say for the folk on the film, Buridar is, is is Welsh for good food. Just good so food. people understand what what the name of the cafe yeah. is, yeah. So yeah, Buridar Banger we are. So good food banger, which is basically it's kind of like a forty seater restaurant uh, with a coffee shop, uh, a surplus food scheme, food club. It's not a food bank because that they're massively stigmatised, but it's a f surplus food club. That there is a big difference. Um, but that basically we provide training and employment opportunities for, again, for people with long-term complex barriers to employment. So uh, basically a lot of the guys that come through the system at Perry House work there, but we also positively discriminate for people with mental health, uh, homelessness um, sort of issues. So, uh, yeah, we've been doing that for um, about 18 months. We open now. Uh, it was a, a bit of a labour of love, as you know, Wolf. It's not always been plain sailing for us in terms of um, it's, that's something that's very different for us. We're working as part of a partnership on that with our local health board, local authority, a couple of lo big local housing associations, but very difficult for us because normally we, we'd like, even though we always complain that we're on our own and we're an outlier, we do like working in a silo or, or insular because we just get shit done basically and we don't sit down and talk spend hours talking about it and wasting loads of time and money and effort and stuff we just get it done but um that's something that we're, we're kind of massively proud of it kind of sits right at the heart of the local community um been incredibly well received um, and just allows us to do a lot of um the kind of ethos behind um with that is and, and one specifically we haven't branded it as a recovery cafe we've seen a number of them over the years but kind of what we didn't want to do was be placed into too kind of small of a box because i think oh it's great if you walk in that cafe you've got no idea where you're walking no, in as a, a member no, of the no, public no, no i mean we've got like a big word mural that's on the side that kind of gives people more of an indicator about our values and the things that are sort of most important but one of the things one of the the, the, the big sort of ethos for for NWRC is to try and be of service, to try and offer some service to our community outside of our, our own recovery community. As through addiction, we take a massive amount. We all know the social cost is huge, uh, but 
as it's just one of these weird things about recovery that we actually get well and, and, and we, we gain strength by giving our time and our efforts away to other people yeah. and by and so it's one of the things again the kind of themes behind Bui Da was to try and be of service to other marginalised communities within the wider yeah. community so we've done like events where we've um, last Mother's Day last year we, we just did it specifically for families with uh, children on the autistic spectrum um, and basically we kind of the usual kind of really nice menu and everything but we brought in a lot of um, sort of sensory support brought in a couple of workers who, who basically and then basically when all the families were in we sat everyone at the same time and then we basically just locked the front doors and just said to them right the kids are free range you just sit down enjoy your meal we've got three hours and, and like i said i mean I, i'm a father of an autistic child so i know we're normally in and out of a restaurant in 20 minutes we've ordered in the car on the, on the phone or at the bar when we first get there we're asking for the bill when they're bringing the maids because we want to get out before we make everyone else feel uncomfortable but it was just three hours with, with some families that, I mean, some of the feedback from that was immense. Some families that hadn't been out, able to go out and eat out for years, sure. you know, and it, again, that was the stuff. I mean, we lost a huge amount of money for mm. it on the day, but again, that was, that's what Bimi Dad gives us is that ability to offer a mm. platform or, or, or a space or, or to be of service to, to yeah. other at the same time, providing the, the best food on the high street and show and shoulders. Got an amazing chef worth for Gordon. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's just astonishing. And I think when people think of a recovery project, you know, it, it's easy to think of it in some very small or traditional ways. You know, but in reality, we are talking about a project that houses, you know, 18 people. We're talking about a project that has 50 or 60 people can visit it in a day to access different types of day services. Uh, that's location number one. You know, we've got a, a growing project in two separate locations that can have five, 10 people working in it, supporting community and restaurants. And and and, and then we've got a, a community cafe employing a number of set of staff. And like you say, it's literally physically at the heart of the community. 